Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to discuss about what causes lung disease. And this is often something that we ask way too late when we've already got a lung problem and we're uh, wondering, well, what could we have done maybe to prevent it? And to be honest, it's not too late in many circumstances, even if you've already developed a lung condition such as asthma, COPD, you know, interstitial lung disease, something else. It's never too late actually to try to remove some of these risk factors and try to actually be in a position where you can get the most out of what you've got, even if you've got a condition to try to slow down its progression or worsening or to prevent it in the first place. And I think if you're watching this and you don't have any issues with your chest or maybe you've had uh, some kind of an infection, chest infection, and you really felt rough, you can imagine living chronically with the lung condition can be really, really difficult. So obviously just trying to prevent that from happening is really important. So the good news is for many respiratory conditions, we do have uh, a way to prevent it and that's by breathing in clean air. And I think that's something that we need to to keep in mind all the time. Are we breathing in clean air? And that's not only to do with pollution. It's also stuff that we do ourselves to us, what we inhale in our own homes. Are we having fresh air in our own homes? Are we opening the windows enough? Are we uh, cooking and the stoves are releasing a lot of smoke? Is there passive smoking inside the house? Is there active smoking? So if, if you can notice, I'm not going straight for the smoking as you might have expected, but it is an important risk factor for a lot of airways conditions such as COPD. And in people who have asthma, who also smoke, it can be a big issue. So let me just go about causes for lung disease um, in sort of a semi-structured way. But first of all, I'd like to, uh, I've discussed in other videos about what the possible conditions we may develop in the lungs may be. And I will link to that video in the description below. But in this one, I'd like to just focus a little bit on causes. And one of them would be infections. So people getting all kinds of infections may develop lung disease. Now, normally this is an acute event. And if you've ever had a cold that, or an episode of pneumonia, and you've struggled with your breathing for a few days, a few weeks, you can know how bad that is. Now, preventing infections is tr tricky. It's tricky because in many cases we cannot control uh, exactly what we're inhaling. But obviously, as we've been seeing with the pandemic, with the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, avoiding viruses can be really, really difficult. Even despite all the lockdowns and all the things that have been going on, people still managed to ended up getting the virus eventually, sooner or later, because it's something that will be passed on from person to person. And then a person who carries some viruses will go to a different community, spread it there, and it, it just goes like that. The good news is we've got an immune system that tends to be trained uh, either through you know, natural immunity. I try to avoid the, these sort of terms because after the pandemic, anything that you say related to immunity can be misinterpreted. And that's not what I'm trying to do here. Uh, but yeah, we, we do protect our lungs from infection through our own body's immune responses. And those are working all the time around the clock at every moment of the day. Our immune system is guarding the entrance. Basically, they're guarding our bodies from getting really bad infections, nasty infections. There's also vaccination. Vaccination is useful in the prevention of inter uh, in the prevention of infections affecting the lungs and worsening conditions that may be there already. So I'm not talking here about only COVID-19 vaccines because I think a lot of people have just focused on that recently, but they've forgotten that there are a lot of other useful vaccines out there. For example, the uh, flu vaccine and the anti-pneumococcal vaccinations. These are things that have been already established in clinical practice for many, many years. They've been in use for tens of years really, so for decades. And they're very, very useful, especially in people who already have chronic lung disease. So if you've got, for example, COPD, or you've got a family member who's got a chronic lung disease, actually for them getting vaccinated, for yourself getting vaccinated against pneumonia, against flu, can actually help you prevent very severe episodes of pneumonia or exacerbations or flare-ups of your chronic lung disease, especially during the cold season, if you're living in a temperate climate. So this can be really, really helpful. Now, preventing pneumonia in general can also be done by maintaining a healthy lifestyle because your body's immune response will operate better if you've eaten well, slept enough, um, had good food in your system and your body's overall kind of in good shape. So that will be the best thing that you can do. Just kind of keeping a healthy living, being active, eating well, sleeping well. That would go a long way towards preventing a lot of these infections that can cause acute lung disease or chronic lung disease. 
Another cause for lung disease is smoking. Smoking is a really, really big one. Now, I tend to avoid going into smoking Im immediately in videos about lung disease because I can understand that a lot of people will feel that uh, it's really hard for them to quit. But it's something that we need to mention. Everyone will mention. It's become a bit of a cliche to the point where uh, people have repeated that smoking is, uh, is bad for you to the point where it just sort of fades into the background and people don't acknowledge it anymore. They just like, oh, it's just something people say, you know, and it, people don't think about it from an individual perspective for your own person. But smoking is the biggest risk factor from chronic lung diseases. And to be honest, a lot of cases of COPD would be prevented if people wouldn't smoke. And that's a fact that's been proven in a lot of ways. Cancer, lung cancer can be prevented in many, many situations by just not smoking. So you can imagine just stopping this vice and addiction can actually improve your life and maybe add a lot of years of good life to your own, you know, life. And you can actually go a long, uh, a long way just by quitting smoking. But it's really hard. And with qu smoking, I just want to just say, if you are struggling to quit, do not hesitate to seek help. It's one of those things that's actually an addiction. And an addiction is almost like a disease in itself. It's something that needs to be treated as a condition, as a medical problem, as a disease, with treatments sometimes to reduce your cravings for smoking, with psychotherapy, support, social interventions, making sure that you're aware of the connections between when you smoke, what you're doing at that moment, trying to break these patterns. It's very, very complicated. A lot of smokers relapse. They may quit for a few days. They may go cold turkey. They may be very ambitious to quit, but then end up coming back. But the majority of smokers actually have been found that they would want to quit, but they're just really struggling. So I find that blanket statements such as you should quit smoking for a better health are not very helpful sometimes. And we need to go from the individual uh, perspective. But if you are having issues in your life that are preventing you from quitting smoking, maybe a lot of stress at work, maybe you're in a toxic environment surrounded by people who smoke a lot and they encourage you to smoke, maybe there are, there are interventions there that should be, uh, the steps that should be taken in that direction to try to remove some of these factors that are driving you to have a very poor health choices in your case. Because at the end of the day, it's your life and taking responsibility for that and making sure that you're preventing some of these uh, causes for lung disease are really important. So quitting smoking is probably the healthiest thing that you can do if you are smoking. The other thing would be, in the terms of causing lung disease, would be occupational and environmental exposures. And I think, again, this is one topic where people do not talk about it too much. It's mentioned, we know about it, but we kind of don't focus on it too much. So if you are in a toxic work environment, and I don't mean psychologically, if you are actually working in a mine, you're working in a foundry, you're working in a place uh, where the business that's, that's run there generates a lot of fumes, dusts, things that you're inhaling that you know are bad for your lungs. Try to ask your employer to provide the right uh, uh, protections, respiratory protection. And that could be in the form of masks. It could be in the forms of opening up the windows, making sure that the place is well ventilated. There are extractor fans. There's uh, there's maybe some spraying of water on, on surfaces that produce a lot of dust so that that stuff isn't in the air and you're not inhaling it. So making sure that you've got the appropriate occupational protections in place is really important. And you, I, I don't know, it's, it's down to the individual sometimes to try to choose work that is good for them. And if it's making them unwell, I know it's a hard choice, especially if you need to make money to support your family, to do all these things. It can be really difficult sometimes to change your job. You don't want to lose a job, but at the same time, you don't want to lose your health because in the long run, it's not going to be good either for yourself or your family if they will be struggling with, with you being unwell. So I know this is a hard thing to say, and I don't want to, to sound like someone who's just droning on about this, but really we need better occupational protection, especially in certain parts of the world where this is not uh, very strongly enforced. And there are a lot of places where we still work in very, very toxic environments. And we need more, more intervention to try to have safe workspaces so that people do the work, they are productive, they're doing the things, but they're not actually getting worse in terms of their health, because that's not going to lead to a productive society in, in the long run. Now, obviously, there are sometimes environmental exposures at home. So we need to bear in mind that there could be things there. 
And um, if you are finding that some things around your house, some of your hobbies, some of the, uh, the things around your home environment are causing you to feel chest tightness, cough, wheeze, you are allergic to certain things in the house, it could be a good idea to try to remove those exposures. So if you are, for example, someone who keeps pets, but the pets are making you feel unwell, maybe you should consider getting a different pet or <laughs> doing something where you're not actually exposing your, your airways, your lungs to dusts and things that might be triggering allergic reactions or other forms of lung disease. And there could be a lot of things around the house that you may want to think about. So for example, I will give you a couple of examples. If you are keeping birds, this would be one thing, and you are, <laughs> you have some kind of an allergy or your chest goes tight, or you've been told that you're sensitized to birds, probably you should not keep birds around the house anymore. Then uh, if, or you can keep them outside, relocate them to a friend or something like that. If you have a lot of mold buildup around the house, that's probably something that may drive lung disease in the long run. It's not necessarily that you will get an active fungal infection because of the, the fungus around the house, because of the mold around the house, water damage, damp, etc. But it could be that you may become allergic to the fungus and develop a form of asthma. So that could be one of the triggers for lung disease, for chronic lung disease that you will need to struggle then for a long time. If you're doing a lot of gardening, a green, if you keep a greenhouse, if you use a lot of fertilizers, organic potting mixes, things like that that are affecting your lungs, make sure that you're using masks, make sure you're doing it outside. So generally, if you are doing any kind of work, if you're doing it in the open air, it's usually a lot better, whatever that work is, than doing it somewhere inside in an enclosed space where the concentration of the things that you are inhaling in the air will be much higher. That would be one thing. The other thing I'd like to mention here would be air pollution. So obviously air pollution, everyone tends to blame air pollution as um, a cause for lung disease. But I think the discussion is a little bit more nuanced because I think the main, especially in, in if you're living in a relatively well-developed place in the world, it doesn't have to be a very rich country, but in most countries that have some kind of social protection in place, you will have actually some controls over what's in the air. Now, this could be a lot of, uh, there could be a lot of discussion about that. I can touch upon that in a second. But I would want you to, to think about whether there's anything that's causing indoor air pollution. I'm, if, if you can uh, understand the theme of this video is that we need to be careful what we're breathing in and the concentration at which we're breathing it in. So if you imagine that you live in a house in which there is a stove that, for example, is the chimney is not working very well, it's not sucking out the smoke very well, and you're cooking with that stove or you're heating your house with that stove and there is smoke inside the house, that is indoor air pollution. Actually, the concentration of smoke in that enclosed space will be very high, even though you may think, oh, it's just a little bit of smoke from, the, from my, my stove. That could be a, a form of air pollution. If you're using a lot of candles, if you're burning a lot of incense, if you're doing all these things, it will raise the concentration of particulate matter in the air that you're breathing in that could affect not only your lungs, but some other uh, organs of the body as well, because depending on the particle size, the, some of these things may actually pass through the lungs and be absorbed in the bloodstream and cause heart disease, for example, uh, vessel, blood vessel disease. So there's a lot of research into air pollution going on and how it may increase the risk at a population level, but it's very hard to, to work out on an individual level how much air pollution will uh, definitely affect you. And this is something that I would just think about a lot if there is something around the house that is maybe uh, a trigger for for lung disease so smoke passive smoking so if the, if you're not an active smoker yourself but there are a lot of people who are smoking the typical uh, people who are smoking in the kitchen the kitchen's a bit of a cloud when you walk in that's probably not healthy that's indoor air pollution and it's not something that you are uh, in control of sometimes because of uh, the environment where you live in so always remember open up the windows let air fresh air in a few times a day. Make sure that the dust is really well uh, vacuumed. There's, uh, you know, you can wipe the dust. Make sure that there's not a lot of fungus build up around the house. That, you know, things like that need to be fixed because air pollution can be bad. And of course, if you think about environmental, uh, uh, about pollution in the environment that's maybe outside your home, of course, if you live uh, next to a plant that's spewing out a lot of noxious fumes and things like that, you may want to consider moving, even if that may be very, very hard for you, for your family. 
it may be one of the things that we, you, you have to take responsibility for and try to live in a safe environment. If you're living next to a motorway where there's a lot of particulate matter from the, the road traffic, it's not only the fumes that are expelled by, by, the, uh, by the cars, it's actually the particulates from brake pads, from uh, tires, from uh, the wear of the road. All of these generate microscopic particles that can float in the air because they're very, very tiny and small and you inhale them in your lungs, they deposit themselves in the lungs, they can cause problems long term. So air pollution is a very, very big issue. So it's, but it's not always the big chemical plant that's causing these things. Sometimes it could be just road traffic. If you're living next to a busy intersection, that's probably a bad place to live. If you're uh, having things around the house, if you're, there's smoke around the house, if there's all kinds of, uh, you know, things burning there, that could be a form of air pollution. So that's something very important. And the final thing that I would say about what causes lung disease and, you know, how we can prevent it, this is where we cannot really prevent it very well. So I'm talking about genetic predisposition. So many of us will be born with some kind of predisposition to getting some form of condition, <laughs> whether it's lung disease, heart disease, something like that. So I think this is where we don't really have a very good solution. But if there are a lot of cases of lung disease in the family, it could be an indication that you may need to be even more careful about the, the things that I've already mentioned, about smoking, pollution, things like that, to avoid these things, because you might have a predisposition naturally to get much more severe lung disease, maybe earlier in life, and have a high risk for, for, for bad outcomes. So if you know that there are a lot of cases of lung disease in the family, probably it's a wise thing to have more regular checkups with your doctor to make sure that things are going well. And if there is a lung condition that is detected, at least you'll have the best chance to detect it early because you already know that there may be cases in the family. So if a lot of people have asthma in the family, you may be at a higher risk of getting asthma. If a lot of people have pulmonary fibrosis in the family that's not explained by anything, you may also be at a higher risk. So having regular checkups to, with your doctor to catch these conditions early is really important. So I, thought, I hope you found this discussion relatively helpful. It's a long video, just kind of went all over the place, but I hope it reassures you that we as doctors are also thinking about these things. And I hope that you will be thinking about these things for your own health, to take responsibility and make sure that you have the best outcomes health-wise for you. Thank you very much for watching. All the best and good health.